Hansel and Gretel, you are dear smart kids. You will find safety when father and stepmother take you out. You shall bring, and you will be all right. You shall bring, and you will. Mm -hmm. Well, hello there. Hello. Ruby here. Uh -huh. I told myself I was only going to have one piece of candy, but I guess I got a little carried away. <laughs> you know, eating all of this yummy candy reminds me of a story my mother used to tell me as a child. Whoa. Oh, this story is a good one, but it has some, well, scary moments. Yeah. Do you like scary stories? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. I do, too. I have an idea. How about one more piece of candy, and then I'll tell you a scary story. Yeah. Don't worry. The end of the story is sweet. So grab a cup of warm milk, and let's watch and listen. Are you ready, my friends? Yes. Let's begin. Let's go. Whoa. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, there lived a father, his children, Hansel and Gretel, and their stepmother. The family lived in a little cottage in the forest. The children adored their father, but their stepmother, not so much. Nancy married the children's father years after their dear mother had passed away. Late one evening, while the children were in bed, Nancy was talking to Herman. Herman, we aren't making enough money to feed these dumb kids. They're eating too much, and Gretel is lazy and talks too much. And Hansel doesn't know how to do a darn thing around this house. We need to get rid of them once and for all. Herman was shocked that the stepmother would be talking this way. What a nasty thing to say, Nancy. I love my children. They mean the world to me. Well, they might mean the world to you, but unless you want us all to starve, you better do as I say. If you don't, I will leave you, and I will burn this house down so you and your kids will have nothing. Nancy began telling him how they were going to carry through with this terrible plan. Tomorrow morning, when Hansel and Gretel wake up, we will tell them we are going for a hike in the forest. We will walk deep into the woods. We will build a fire and give them one last piece of bread. And while they are eating, we will tell them we are going to get some water from the river. But instead, we will leave the children in the forest all alone so they can't find their way back home. And then, my darling, we will be free. Oh, this is so upsetting. <laughs> I think I need another piece of candy. Good. Oh, let's get back to the story. So the father agreed with Nancy. Okay, we will do as you wish, my dear. Hopefully Hansel and Gretel can live on their own and find happiness elsewhere. Guess what? Hansel and Gretel were unable to sleep that night, and they overheard this frightful plan. Hansel, I can't believe that father and stepmother are going to be so cruel, cried Gretel. There, there, little sister, don't cry. I will somehow find a way to save us from this dreadful plan. Please now, Gretel, let's try to get some sleep and pray for our safekeeping. Hansel and Gretel climbed up into their beds and fell fast asleep. Hansel and Gretel, you are dear smart kids. You will find safety when father and stepmother take you you shall bring, and you will be all right. You shall bring, and you will be all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
boy, this story gets to me sometimes. Excuse me, while I have one more piece of candy. Let's go, kids. We are going for a beautiful hike in the woods. We have some fresh bread to give you as a treat when we take a rest in the forest, said the stepmother. And off they went into the forest. Hours passed, and little Gretel was exhausted. Father, please, I can't go any further. My legs hurt, and I'm very thirsty. Oh, yes, of course, said Nancy. The children need to rest. Why don't you kids stay here and rest? And me and your father will go get you some water from the river. Here, take some fresh bread and relax a little bit. Right, Herman? Asked Nancy. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, let, let's go get the children some water, said the father. And the two walked off away from the kids forever. Hansel and Gretel relaxed under a tree and ate their bread. They knew they were alone in the forest, and their father and stepmother were not coming back. Gretel, don't be afraid. It will be dark soon, and that's okay. I'm using my brain, and I'm thinking of everything I can to save us from harm. We will make our way in this world together. I am your big brother, and I will take care of you. I promise, said Hansel. Gretel felt so comforted by the words of her brother. When Hansel promised something, he always kept his word. So the two children walked throughout the night and all the next day. They were nowhere near home, and they were very, very tired. They saw what looked like a house several miles away. Let's keep walking, Gretel. There may be someone in the house up yonder that can help us. After a whole night and the following day walking, they were shocked at what they saw. There stood a beautiful gingerbread house with candy cane windows and chocolate bars of every kind all on the house. Frosting and candy treats were shining on the door. It was a delicious sight. Ooh, all of this talk of candy is making me hungry. Perhaps I need another. Hansel and Gretel started nibbling on the house. I don't blame them. They were starving. And who doesn't like candy, right? All of a sudden, the door of the house opened, and a very old woman, leaning on a crutch, opened the door to welcome them in. Oh, you poor little children. You look exhausted and filthy. You need a warm bed, cookies and milk, and a hot bubble bath, said the old woman. She led them into the house and fed them and gave them warm beds to sleep in. The children were safe, right? Not quite yet. The old woman was actually a wicked old witch. She was as evil and nasty as your worst nightmare. She actually built that gingerbread house made of candy to tempt children to come in. Her evil plan was to fatten them up with all kinds of food and then cook them in the oven and have them for supper. Oh, the nerve of that nasty woman. The children woke up the next morning to a terrifying sight. The wicked old witch grabbed Hansel and carried him away to an old cage with a locking door. Then the old hag made Gretel cook and clean all day and all night. You are going to fatten your brother up. And when he's fat enough, I'm going to eat him. Poor, poor Gretel. She was so upset, but she remembered her brother's words. Don't worry, little sister. I'm going to use my brain. I am thinking of everything I can to save us from harm, and I will take care of you. I promise. 
Every morning, the old witch would come over to the cage. She was so old, she couldn't see hardly at all, but she could sure smell. Hansel, stick out your finger so I can see how fat you've grown. If you feel fat enough, I am going to eat you. Hansel was a bright boy, and he realized that she was as blind as a bat. So he stuck out a little stick that he found in his cage. Here you go. Here's my finger, Mrs. Nasty Witch. The witch grabbed what she thought was his finger, but it was really a skinny little stick. This infuriated the old hag. I don't care if you are thin or fat. I'm going to eat you up for my supper tonight. Gretel, go get the key and unlock this cage. Gretel hurried to get the key as she thought this would be the perfect time for the two children to try to escape this evil witch. She unlocked the door and Hansel came walking out. Now, the time has come for both of you to be my supper. Get in the oven. Now, screamed the old hag. Use your brain and you will be all right. Now, Gretel may have been small, but she was a very smart girl. I am just a little girl and I don't understand how to get in the oven. You dumb fool! It's simple. Even an old woman like me can climb in, screamed the witch. And with that, she walked up to the oven, leaned into it, and Gretel, with all her might, gave that witch a mighty <gasps> shove, sending the old hag right into the fire, once and for all. <gasps> Hansel and Gretel hugged each other and shouted, We are safe! We have used our brains, and now we are safe! The wicked old witch is finally gone! Before leaving the gingerbread house, they entered inside one last time to have a bite of candy. And wouldn't you know it, behind a chair, there was a treasure chest filled with gold coins. Gretel, we can finally go home to father and give him the gold coins. And he won't have to worry about feeding us, as we will have plenty of money to take care of all of us, said Hansel. The two walked and walked through the forest with golden coins in their pockets. And off in the distance, they spotted their house that they had lived in before. They finally arrived home and knocked on the door. The father answered the door and was so surprised and happy to see his children, as he never wanted harm to come to them. Father, we are here, and we are safe, and we also have gold coins, so you will have enough money to feed us all, and we can live happily ever after, cried Gretel. The father explained to the children how the stepmother threatened him if he didn't follow her plan. I always knew you two were very smart and that you knew how to use your brains. I knew you were going to be okay. I knew you were going to be safe. The father also told the children that the stepmother had been eaten by a wolf a few days ago. The father and his children truly lived out the rest of their lives together, away from harm, and they had plenty of food and love for each other. Thank you for joining me here on Family Roberto. I hope you enjoyed the story. Ooh, my tummy is crumbling. I think I may have had too much candy over the course of this story. See you next time, my friends. And remember, you need to think before you do something and always use your brain. You are very smart. Use your brain and you will be all right. Bye for now. Let's join Ruby, you and me, with Ruby. I have an idea. Ruby's story time.
Wake up, lazy Susie. Lazy Susie! Wake up, Lazy Susie! Wake up, Lazy Susie! Hey, Susan. Oh, dear. I'm sorry I woke you up. I just wanted to let you know that we should be there in a few minutes. Oh, sure. I would be happy to fix your lunch. Okay. Well, hello there. Ruby here. My friend Susan and I are headed over to the Honeydew Campground for a relaxing weekend. Mm -hmm. I picked her up this morning. <laughs> She's pretty tired back there, so she's resting back in the camper while I drive. I haven't seen her in years, and I thought this would be a perfect day to catch up on some good times. I have an idea. How about you come along with us? Fire up the grill, Ruby. I'm hungry. Oh. Right away, Susan. Can you go get me some water? And while you're at it, grab some chocolate bars, will ya? Uh, I would love to sit and talk a bit, but... Looks like we've got some mud on the camper. Can you be a doll face and go get that off? I don't want to get my hands dirty. This is not my idea of a relaxing weekend. Lazy Susan over here is not being a very good friend, is she? This reminds me of a story I read a long time ago. Once upon a time, there was a couple that lived in a small cabin. Mildred married Homer after his mm. first wife died. This mm. was Mildred's daughter. We call her Lazy Susie. And you'll see why in a moment. Now Homer had a daughter too from his first wife, and her name was Willow. I don't like you. You might as well know it. You turn my stomach every time I look at you. I see you prissing around here, smiling and acting all helpful. Your father may love you, but I don't. Now go. Get out of this house and out of my sight. If you want to come back home, you must leave and go find work. Make lots of money. If you return home with the money, I may agree to let you back in so you can care for your aging father. I haven't done a thing to you. I am not sure why you don't love me, but as you wish, I will go out and find work. Don't worry, Father. I will return with some money. I am a hard worker, and I'm honest, too. I will be back to care for you. And off she went. She walked and walked, when suddenly she came upon a big apple tree. Greetings to you. Could you please help me? My twigs seem to be dead and need to be removed. Oh my goodness, you poor thing. Of course I will help you. Willow journeys on. Willow journeys on. The girl comes upon a vineyard. Greetings to you. Could you please help me? My vines are so dry 
and need to be removed so that the grapes can grow and then I can share some with you. Oh my goodness, you precious little thing. Of course I will help you. Now stay still. This won't hurt a bit. Willow journeys on. Willow journeys on. Greetings to you. I am happy to see you. My oven has gotten so dirty. Could you help me by wiping me off? Oh, you poor little oven. I will certainly wipe you off. There, all better. Willow journeys on. Willow journeys on. Willow comes up to a well. And a greeting to you. Could you please help me? My well seems to be dry. Could you press the on button so that the water can fill me up? Oh, you poor little well. You must be so thirsty. Of course I will help you. Mm. Willow journeys on. Willow journeys on. Hi there. Will you please help me? I am so dirty. I need a bath and a haircut. Oh, of course I will help you. <laughs> <laughs> Willow journeys on and on. Wow, a fairy house. I've always wanted to visit a fairy. Come in. Young girl, we know you are tired and have worked so hard. You do not need to journey on. You may work here, cleaning the six rooms, but never enter the seventh room. Well, Willow worked hard for quite some time, tidying up the fancy fairy house, but she started to get a little homesick for her father. Fancy fairies? No offense, really, but I want to go home. However, my stepmother said that I would not be welcome unless I bring home money. So, the fairy told Willow to enter into room seven. She would find piles of silver and gold. She could lie down and take a nap on the gold and silver, and whatever amount of coins stuck to her, she could have them. Willow journeys home. Willow journeys home. Willow journeys home. <laughs> Father, I have missed you so. Look. I have money to take care of you. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. That's all the money you brought home? My Susie will surely bring home more. Susie? Susie? Susie! Wake up, Lazy Susie. Lazy Susie, go bring home some money. Okay, friends. 
You remember all the stops Willow made before she arrived at the ferry house, right? Let's see how well lazy Susie did at helping out, shall we? Nah, I don't want to help you. I don't help ugly trees. Help yourself. I'm not going to pick up all that dead stuff. Oh, what are you going to do, cry like a baby? <laughs> Who cooks in the oven anymore anyway? I'd rather order takeout. You want me to push the on button? Uh, you push it. Wells are dumb anyway. Ugh, stay back! I hate dogs. If you want a bath, go lick yourself or something. I can't believe this girl. She's not only lazy, but rude as ever. Gee whiz! Well, lazy Susie arrived to the fairy house and saw all six fancy fairies. Yes, they told her to work a while in all six rooms, but not to enter the seventh. Well, what do you think she did? You think she entered the seventh room? Mm-hmm, you're exactly right. That little snickerdoodle did just that. Ah! Ouch! Oh! Ouch! Hey, dog. I see you have a comfy blanket. Let me borrow that to cover my bee stings. No. You didn't help me. You must learn a lesson. Finally, some water. No, Lazy Susie. This water is not for you. You wouldn't help me. You must learn a lesson. I am so hungry I could eat an elephant. Give me some snacks. I am afraid not. You would not help me. No snacks for you. You must learn a lesson. Grapes, my favorite. Give me some. Step back. No grapes for you. You would not help me. You must learn a lesson! Oh, I'm gonna sink my teeth into one of those apples right now! Not so fast, you selfish, lazy girl. You wouldn't help me. You must learn a lesson. Lazy Susie arrived home with no money and a lot of bee stings. But you want to know something amazing? Willow not only received gold and silver coins, but also received a little magic. You poor girl. I know those bee stings must hurt something awful. I would be happy to help you. Wow! They're gone! The bee stings, they're gone! Thank you, Willow, for helping me. I am so sorry I behaved so badly. How can I ever repay you? I have no money. You don't need to repay me with money. Try helping others when you can. Use kind words instead of being mean. Treat others the way you want to be treated, Susie. Then you will have a heart of gold. And that's more valuable than all the money in the world. Whoa! What a story! Thank you for joining me here on Ruby Storytime. I hope you enjoyed the story. Now, if you will excuse me, I'm going to go inside the camper and wake up my friend, Lazy Susan. I think she needs to hear this story over and over again. Bye for now.
<clears throat> Susan. Uh, wake up, lazy Susan. Dad, gummit, Ruby. Why'd you have to go and wake me up? I tell you what, I was having a dream like nobody's business. <laughs> I was ironing my dress in the rose garden when all of a sudden this giant turtle came a-racing through the garden. Scared the dickens out of me. And Susan, it's gonna be dark soon and we need to pack up the camper. As you can see, I've done most of the work while you've done all of the napping. I have an idea. How about you go down to the river and check to see if we left anything there? One thing for sure, when you leave a campground, you want to make sure you don't leave any trash behind. All the way down to the river? It's just right down the trail, Susan. You can see the river from here for Pete's sake. Just be sure to stay on the trail. And whatever you do, don't go near that dirty oven. Word has it, that oven is filled with bees. You don't want to get stung now. Roger that, Ruby. Well, what have we here? An oven. Fresh apple pie. I don't mind if I do. Ouch! 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 Ooh! Oh! Son of a bee sting! Let's get out of here, Ruby! Uh, horse feathers. I told you to stay away from the oven. Why didn't you just go to the river? Yeah, you slept all day. Well, I could have told you that. Take the bread out of the oven before it burns. Yeah. This is a lesson you should learn. Take the bread out of the oven before it burns. This is a lesson you should learn. Mm -hmm. Don't let the bread in the oven burn. <laughs> ah, the smell of warm bread in the oven makes my mouth water every time. I've made three loaves of bread already. And I picked some apples off of the tree so I can make a big, beautiful... You want to guess? <laughs> no, apples won't make a chocolate cake. Guess again. No, apples won't make fried chicken. You're right. I thought I would make an apple pie. Ooh, talking about bread and apples reminds me of one of my favorite stories. I have an idea. Let me take this bread out of the oven before it burns, and I'll be back in a jiffy. Once upon a time, there was a woman who had two daughters, Wendy and Cindy. Now the mother had a favorite daughter, Cindy. 
who was a bit like her mother. They were both a little, well, lazy. The mother and Cindy made Wendy do all the work for them, so they could just sit back and eat and nap and not help at all with things that needed to be done around the house. Why, the mother ordered Wendy to go out every day to sit by the well and spin at the spinning wheel all day until her fingers <laughs> bled. Little Wendy was so tired from spinning that wheel that she dropped the spindle in the well. <gasps> mother, please don't be mad, but I dropped the spindle in the well and now I won't be able to spin for you and Cindy cried Wendy. <laughs> Listen here, you little brat. Cindy and I want our dresses made, and you are going to be the one to make them. Since you dropped the spindle in the well, you're going to be the one to go after it. Don't come back home without that spindle, screamed the selfish, thoughtless mother. Wendy was so sad and scared. She had no idea how to get that spindle out of the well. So she did what she thought her only choice was. She jumped all the way down the well. Ah! It was a long way down. A long way down indeed. But she didn't remember anything until she woke up and found herself in a beautiful land. Goodness, a beautiful meadow. So many flowers, waterfalls. This must be paradise. She walked and twirled around, her hair blowing in the wind. She skipped and giggled and twirled again. Then something strange happened. She all of a sudden came upon an oven. And in this oven, there were so many loaves of bread baking. Ah, the smell of delicious bread, said Wendy. Take the bread out of the oven before it burns. This is a lesson you should learn. Take the bread out of the oven before it burns. This is a lesson you should learn. Mm don't let the bread in the oven burn. Oh my, I will get the bread out. And she did. Wendy walked a little farther and came upon a tree filled with red apples. Pick me, pick me. I am right, so shake the tree. Pick me, pick me. And me, and me, and me. We are right, so shake the tree. Well, Wendy was such a good helper and never lazy. She picked so many apples, so many you could make 10 apple pies. Mm -hmm. Apple pie sounds good right about now, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's get back to the story. The next thing she came to was a little house and she saw an older woman looking out with very large teeth. Oh, Wendy was terrified and turned to run away. My dear child, don't be afraid. I may look different, but I am kind. All I ask is for you to work with me in my house. If you do this without being lazy, I will make you very happy. You must be very careful, however, to make my bed in the right way. For I wish you to always shake my bedspread with strength and might, so that the feathers fly about. And then the people will say, down there in the world, Oh look, it's snowing. For I am Mother Holly. <laughs> Wendy did as she was told for quite some time. She cooked and cleaned and always shook Mother Holly's bedspread with all her might. So all of those children down in the world would see the snow with delight. <laughs>
Wendy did her job well, and Mother Holly was pleased. My child, you have done a wonderful job. It's time to go home now. I will lead you to the gate. The gate was opened, and as Wendy passed through, a shower of golden light shone on her, and she glistened from head to toe from that day on. This is your reward for working so hard and not being lazy. Here is the spindle which you dropped in the well. Now go home, my child. Be your best and always have a heart of gold. And with that, Wendy opened the gate and magically appeared back home to her mother and Cindy. The mother and Cindy were a little miffed with Wendy. They didn't like the idea of her being so happy and shimmering with gold. Tell us where you've been, Wendy, snarled the mother. Wendy told them all about her adventures, and it excited the two selfish ladies so much that the mother sent Cindy right out to the well and ordered her to jump, Cindy, jump. Like her sister Wendy, Cindy awoke in the beautiful meadow and walked over to the oven. Take the bread out of the oven before it burns. This is a lesson you should learn. Take the bread out of the oven before it burns. This is a lesson you should learn. Mm -hmm. Don't let the bread in the oven burn. Do you think I'm gonna dirty up my hands for you? Just let the bread burn, <sighs> replied Cindy as she walked on. Then she came up to the apple tree. Pick me, pick me, pick me, where ripe as ripe can be. Pick me, pick me, pick me, where ripe as ripe can be. But Cindy answered, <laughs> nice try. I'm not gonna pick all of the apples. Find someone else to do the work. And she passed on. At last, she came to Mother Holly's house. So what do you want from me, Mrs. Big Teeth? Asked Cindy. Mother Holly gave Cindy the same orders. Help me out around the house and you will receive a reward. Don't be lazy, Cindy. And remember to shake my bedspread so the feathers fly about, so the children in the world will see the snow and laugh and shout. Yeah, 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 Cindy grumbled. Do you know what that Cindy did? You're right, absolutely nothing. She just waited around for her reward. She didn't help with the kitchen. She never took the trash out. She wouldn't sweep the floor and never shook the bedspread. Lazy, lazy Cindy. Mother Holly got tired of the laziness and told Cindy to go to the gate herself. I'm not going anywhere without my reward, Mother Holly, screamed lazy Cindy. Mother Holly led her to the gate and she passed through. Instead of showering her with gold that glittered, she had green slime poured on top of her head. This is in return for your services, said Mother Holly, and she promptly shut the gate. Lazy Cindy returned home to her mother and Mindy, crying and whining. But try what she would, Cindy could never get that slime off of her and it stuck to her as long as she lived. <laughs> Woo! What a story! Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy the story. And remember, always help out when you can. Try not to be lazy. Hard work pays off, sometimes in gold. Bye for now, friends.
Take the bread out of the oven before it burns. This is a lesson you should learn. Take the bread out of the oven before it burns. This is a lesson you should learn. Mm -hmm. Don't let the bread in the Ladies oven burn. Ladies and gentlemen, Cinderella. Jesus, the stars are there. They're lining up for you. Don't kill that just yet. Ruby, 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 Ruby. Let's join Ruby. You and me with Ruby. I have an idea. Ruby story time. Oh, rats! My darn shoe fell off. How am I supposed to get down with one shoe? Uh, oh, hello there. Ruby here. Don't mind me. I was just cleaning up a bit in my library, and wouldn't you know it, my shoe fell off. <laughs> this reminds me of a story my mother told me a long time ago. I have an idea. How about I tell you one of my favorite fairy tales? Let me just push the activation button, and let's go find that book, shall we? <laughs> Here it is. Are you ready, friends? Let's begin. Once upon a time, there lived a family of three. A mommy, daddy, and their precious daughter, Ella. One day, sadly, the mother became very sick and passed away, leaving the father to take care of the daughter all by himself. He tried his best to give her all of the love and care he could, but he knew that his daughter needed a mother figure in her life. So, after a long spell, he remarried a woman, hoping she would be a good role model for Ella. After all, the new wife had two daughters of her own. Oh boy. Ella is in for a big surprise when this lady and her daughters move in. The father had to leave town and told his new wife to take care of herself, her daughters, and Ella. He would be back as soon as he could. Oh, hubby, don't you worry about a thing. I will certainly take care of Ella and give her all the love and care she deserves. Now, you go about your business and bring me home a present. You know how much I love presents, right? Indeed I will, my love. Now, Ella, be sure to help out around the house and do as you're told. I will, Father. Get in the house and make my bed. After you do that, sweep the floor. Oh, pull that hair back in a ponytail before I cut it off. You are so ugly, you deserve nothing but the dirt I walk on. <laughs> yeah, you're not good for anything. Go clean our rooms, too. <laughs> Ella wasn't used to this kind of talk. All of her young life, she was treated with such love from her mother. Her heart was broken losing her mother, and being talked down to like this didn't help matters at all. She cried in her bedroom after finishing her chores. Ella had no one to talk to. She cried herself to sleep. Poor, poor Ella. I tell you what, if I could, I would give that lady and her daughters a piece of my mind. No one deserves to be talked to like that. <sighs> Let's get back to the story. Right here, the king's son is putting on a grand ball, and everyone that's anyone is invited to it. Woohoo! <laughs> the invitation says everyone that's anyone is invited. That means you can't go to the ball because you are a nothing. <laughs> you hear me? Nothing. You're nothing. 
so you get to stay home and wash my socks. <laughs> In fact, you see that fireplace all filled with that nasty ash? That's called cinder, Ella. Hey! <laughs> That's the perfect name for you, you filthy nothing. Cinder Ella. <laughs> That's right, friends. That's how Ella got her name, Cinderella. <laughs> Get over here, Cinderella, and finish sewing my daughter's dresses for the ball that you won't be attending. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I've always dreamed of wearing a beautiful dress and being invited to a ball by a prince. Well, you can keep dreaming, because you ain't coming to no ball. That's right. The only ball you'll be attending is in your dreams. <laughs> oh, cry me a river. Now help us get ready for the ball, you worthless girl. <laughs> The ladies, if you can call them ladies, personally, I have a few words to call them, but I better not because children are viewing this video. <laughs> they left the house and headed for the ball, leaving Cinderella all alone. My dear child, I am your fairy godmother, sent here by your mother. I'm here to guide you through this difficult time, but you must do as I tell you. Oh, uh, what is it? What must I do? Let's go outside. We have some work to do. You certainly can't go to the ball like that. Do you see that pumpkin? Oh, my! <laughs> Is this a dream? I must be dreaming. in the air dream three times the stars are there they're lining up for you don't give up just yet your future is straight ahead and remember keep counting dreams enough to start the journey dream twice there's magic in the air dream three times the stars are there they're lining up for you don't give up just yet your future is straight ahead and remember keep When something is important to you, it always starts with a dream. When you dream of something, you're halfway there. But maybe I don't deserve to go. Maybe I should just stay here and clean. My dear child, we all deserve to be happy. None of us are better than the other. You have such kindness in your heart. Be still now. This is me. This is happening. I'm going to the ball? Yes. Your dream is straight ahead. But before the clock tower strikes midnight, you must come home, or else everything will change to how it was before. Three times 
The ball was a fabulous extravaganza. So many beautiful dresses, food, drinks, and music. A lovely sight to behold. That night, Cinderella and the prince locked eyes and gazed at each other. The two enjoyed each other's company. They laughed and danced and dined together. Everything seemed perfect. Until... Oh no! I must be going! Not yet, my love. The night is still young. Hold up, Mr. Prince. She's got to get out of there before her riches turn to rags and her ride turns into a big fat pumpkin. <clears throat> Let's get back to the story. She makes it home to that cold, dark house, and she falls asleep, dreaming of the magical night she had. My dear Ella, always remember what I have told you. Never stop dreaming, for that is when the journey of life begins. When you dream, anything is possible. Hello, my lady. I'm looking for the lady who left her slipper last night at the ball. When I find her, I will ask her to be my princess forever. That shoe? It's mine. I'm here to say yes to marrying you. I don't even need to try that darn thing on. Kiss me. No. Looking at your foot, I can see your big foot won't fit in this delicate slipper. You're not my princess who I met last evening. Look no further. Here I am. <laughs> Throw that slipper away. The rest of the girls can scram. No, you are not the one for me. I can clearly tell in your hateful tone, you are not the one I fell in love with. And remember, keep counting dreams. Enough to start the 
journey Dream twice There's magic in the air Dream three times The stars are there They're lining up for you Don't give up just yet Your future is straight ahead And remember keep Cinderella ended up marrying the prince, and they lived happily ever after. Thank you for joining me here on Ruby Storytime. I hope you enjoyed this popular fairy tale, and remember... There is nothing wrong with having a dream. Some dreams come true, and others, well, we just keep pressing forward for a brighter tomorrow. Dream once, and that's enough to start the journey. Dream twice, there's magic in the air. Dream three times, the stars are there, they're lining up for you. Don't give up just yet, your future is straight ahead. And remember, keep. enough to start the journey dream twice there's magic in the air dream three times the stars are there they're lining up for you don't give up just yet your future is straight ahead and remember keep Where's that book? Oh, I can't reach that one. Ugh. Mm. Ah. Oh, I give up. I think I need a longer ladder. Why, I told that architect not to build this library so high. Hmm. Stop! Oh, no. Stop this thing! Uh, this is the director. Uh, we have a Whoa! malfunction Whoa! with the sliding ladder. You didn't hire me to do stunts. Ruby's screaming. Whoa! I think she's being, sounding like she's being murdered. Get murd. me off of this ladder! Whoa! What's the matter with this thing? Find the set Whoa! design crew. Where is the electricians? Whoa! Check and craft services. Whoa! I'll bet they are all on break again. Gee! It's not stopping! Do, 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 do. Ah, this book I haven't read in a while. Hmm. The Selfish Giant. Interesting. Can we start recording? Oh, we're already recording? Oh, I am so hungry. Oh, where is the cameraman? Oh, he's eating. Hmm. I have to go back to the library. Mr. Tallman's coming for his book. And bringing peach pie.
do believe it's time for me to get a haircut. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, what do you think? <laughs> oh, dear little ones. Ah, what a cute little bird. A bunny and a darling little deer. Well, hello there. Ruby here. I was just reminded of one of my favorite stories. It involves a mirror, chirping birds and other animals, an evil queen, a red apple, seven little dwarfs, a prince, and a beautiful girl. Do you have any idea what the name of this story is? You're right! I have an idea. Let me grab this very special book. Stand by, my friends. <laughs> Ooh, not there. Hmm, not here. Ah, here it is. Are you ready, my friends? Let's begin. Upon a time, there was a beautiful kingdom where a king and queen lived in a magnificent castle. The queen gave birth to a darling little baby girl. They were so happy. As soon as the baby arrived, it started snowing outside, and the queen said, My dear husband, we shall name her Snow White. And that's how the little girl got her name. Sadly, the mother died when Snow White was very young. Now her father remarried, but this time he married a woman who he <laughs> thought was nice. But guess what? She wasn't. She was secretly an evil witch. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. I am the prettiest of all of the women in the land. No one will ever take my place. I am the queen. <laughs> and will be forever," said the evil queen as she looked in the full-length mirror. The mirror always answered back, Of course, my lady. You are the prettiest in the land. No one has your beauty. No one ever can. Years passed, and Snow White grew up to be such a kind-hearted, beautiful woman, despite the evil queen always looking at her with a jealous eye. <laughs> the evil queen walks over to her full-length mirror and stands in front of it once again. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Aren't I the prettiest of them all? Oh, my dear lady, you are pretty, but I must be honest. Snow White is now the prettiest in the land. No one has her beauty. No one ever can. So, the evil queen started throwing a fit. She couldn't stand the thought of someone being prettier than her. It didn't take long for the evil queen to become so jealous that she called one of the hunters that worked for her to come to her room at once. You rang for me, my royal queen? Asked the hunter. Listen to me, and listen to me closely. I am ordering you to take Snow White to the woods and get rid of her once and for all, demanded the queen. You mean... You want me to... Yes! I want her dead. Do you hear me, you worthless fool? Do as you're told. Now! My, my, my. I can't believe what I am reading. How could anyone be so cruel and heartless? Oh, the nerve of that evil queen. Why, I ought to give her a piece of my mind. Oh, let's get back to the story. Late that night, 
The hunter convinced Snow White to come with him deep into the woods to take care of a sick deer. Snow White was so concerned that she had no hesitation to go with the hunter. She noticed the hunter was cold and shivering as they went deeper into the woods. Excuse me, Mr. Hunterman. I see you are shivering. Let me lend you my cape so you can warm up a bit before we continue on. This made the hunter so sad. He knew what a kind heart Snow White had, and he didn't want harm to come to her. Snow White, I, I must tell you the truth. Run, run far away from here, as the evil queen has ordered me to kill you. But I can't do such a terrible deed, cried the hunter. And with that, Snow White, trembling with fear, ran as fast as she could through the forest. She didn't know where she was going, but she knew she had to get away from her dreadful stepmother as fast as she could. I've run all night. I am so very tired. Oh, a house. Maybe they have a cup of water for me to drink and a place to rest, if only for a moment. I am done. My name is Wyatt. I am Abel. My name is Robert. Frank and Scott. My name is Dot. <laughs> From that moment, the seven dwarfs and Snow White got along perfectly. In fact, Dan, Wyatt, Abel, Robert, Frank, Scott, and Dot invited Snow White to stay with them. She was thrilled. I will do all the cooking, cleaning, and I will even make your little beds while you're away working. The seven dwarfs were gold miners, and they all loved this living arrangement. You know, sometimes I wish I had someone to cook, clean, and make my bed. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? I could eat chocolates and sip on my raspberry tea all day. Oh, boy. My mind is wandering again. All right, back to the story. Back at the castle, the evil queen posed in front of the mirror yet again. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Aren't I the prettiest of them all? She expected the mirror to say she was indeed the prettiest, because she assumed Snow White was dead. Oh, my dear lady, you are pretty. But I must be honest, Snow White is now the prettiest in the land. No one has her beauty. No one ever can. And where is this Snow White living? asked the evil queen. You can find her through the forest. You must travel a great distance to a small village called Dwarf Estates. Look for the little house. You will see the beautiful Snow White living with the seven dwarfs. Explain the mirror. The evil queen came up with a deadly plan. Using her magic powers as a witch, she transformed herself into an old beggar woman, and she took a basket filled with apples. But one of the apples, she knew just the one, was a poisoned apple reserved for one special girl, Snow White. Now, before the seven dwarfs left for work, they warned Snow White. A little bird visited us last night and warned us that your stepmother is coming for you. So please, Snow White, don't answer the door. Don't talk to strangers. Don't answer door. Don't talk to strangers. Don't answer door. Please, Snow White. Hello. Snow White listened to the dwarfs and Hello. waved goodbye as the dwarfs all lined up and left for work. Oh, 
Oh, hello there, little bunny. And good morning to you, too. I love all my animal friends. Now I need to go make some stew. Just as she was opening the door to go into the little house, she heard someone walk up behind her. Hello there, beautiful girl. Could I offer you an apple? Asked the old lady. If you don't have any money to buy one, it's quite all right. I would like to give you this apple because you are so beautiful, said the old witch. Yes, Snow White was so kind. She felt a little sorry for the old woman. So she talked with her and Snow White took the apple and even paid her a shiny piece of gold that the dwarfs had given her. Only one bite was taken, and that apple was so poisoned that with one little nibble, Snow White fell to the ground. Although she appeared dead, she was only under a spell that could only be broken by a kiss from a true prince. Finally! I will be the most beautiful woman in the world, and I will remain the most beautiful forever, screamed the witch. <laughs> After a hard day of work, the dwarfs came back home and found Snow White lying on the ground, appearing to be dead and they couldn't bring her back to life. They cried and were so very sad. Their hearts were broken. <laughs> she is too beautiful to be buried. We will make her a glass coffin so we can see her every day. She can lie in her coffin. We will bring her flowers. Every morning, she will always be loved, cried the dwarfs. Days passed, and there was a young prince who was passing through the forest. And as soon as he saw the beautiful girl lying in the coffin, he refused to believe she was dead. Who is this beautiful woman? What has happened here? asked the handsome prince. No, 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 no. The dwarfs told him what had happened, and this saddened the prince. He asked them to open up the coffin. He bent down and kissed her red lips. At that moment, the spell was broken. Snow White opened her eyes, and the two fell in love at first sight. Well, guess what? The prince asked Snow White to marry him. She said yes. Yes! The dwarfs were invited to the wedding at the castle, and they all lived happily ever after. Woo! What a story! Oh, I bet you're asking what happened to that wicked old queen, right? Well, she asked the mirror yet again. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, am I the prettiest? Of them all. Listen here, you old nasty witch. Don't ask me questions, for your heart is evil, and I will answer you no more. And with that, the mirror shattered into pieces. This upset the evil queen so much that she fell over dead. Thank you for joining me here on Family Roberto. I hope you enjoyed the story. And remember, being beautiful on the inside is so much more important than being beautiful on the outside. Have a kind heart, my friend. Look for more stories on Ruby's Storytime. See you next time. Bye for now. Ooh.